Hi, pretty welcome to Run Gaming. We're going to be doing a video on the game of Mystery at the Abbey. Uh, this was done by Days of Wonder. And in this particular game, uh, they found someone early in the morning, and one of the monks they found dead, and they do feel that there was foul play. And they're simply trying to find out who's the one that uh, caused that person to die, or basically murdered them. Is what they're going for. And so what you're doing is you're going through the abbey itself and you're trying to figure out who did that. And it's going to require a lot of asking questions to different players, uh, which I guess in theory you could say they're like the other detectives that are trying to deduce who the person that did it was. So you're going to have um, these cards here, and with these cards they're going to have different people on it. But they're going to have a bunch of different people on it. And you're going to have the Templars, which are the red group. You're going to have the Franciscans, which are the brown uh, robes. And the Benedictines, which are the like black or like dark purplish. And then you're going to have kind of like the different um, ranks, I guess, is what you could call them. You have the Fathers which are these ranks here, uh, which there are two in each of those groups. And there's the brothers, which are three of each of those groups. And then you have the novices, which would be part of this section here. Now one of these cards are taken out, and usually you can throw it like in the box, or you can put it somewhere to where no one can get to it very easily, until someone wants to try to figure out who they think that is. In a three-player game, which is what we're going to be uh, explaining to you off of, each player is going to get six cards. So two, two, And then five will go into the stack here. And what that stack is for is that you can actually get more cards uh, through going to some of the locations on here. So each player is going to take the stack of six cards I have, and you know that these six people are uh, innocent because they are currently in your hand, whereas this one is not. So, for example, I could mark off um, Brother Jacque, uh, Novice Basil, Brother Fortune, Fortune, etc. And then there's so basically you have your six here. And these are cards you can see, but no one else can see. And then each other player is also going to have the same thing, where they can mark off uh, specific ones. And the goal is to keep eliminating people from the list here based on different questions you end up asking people. So, another thing to consider as well is that since the chap, well, the, the abbey itself has very thin walls, and easy to hear because everyone's voice carries, any question you ask people is going to be heard by everybody. So sometimes you're going to have to make sure that the questions you ask are kind of vague enough to where you still get your information, but at the same time, you know, uh, you get the details you need as well, and not anyone else really gets those same details, which is kind of hard to do, but as you get more information and you start passing information along, it does make it a little bit easier as far as uh, which you know to do that with. So at the start of every round, as I said, everyone's going to have a starting hand of six on three players. You're going to get one of these sheets as well. Uh, these just simply have a little box that you can either check mark or write notes on. Basically, it's like a note sheet that you can use. And so you'll use that. And then you're also going to get one of these things, which make it really easy. Um, it also folds up so that way you can like tuck it in there and this ends up being really useful for like uh, hiding your character sheet and so it helps you hide your note sheet um, and it also gives you a lot of information as far as what the rooms do and it makes it uh, gives you a little bit of information as far as the different types of I guess you can call them uh, stats or uh, characteristics of these monks because something you can ask about is whether or not you know, do you have any, you know, hooded monks? Because 12 of these people are hooded monks. 12 of these people are also 
like fat monks. Some of them are going to be bald monks, whereas some have a beard, some have. And you can use those different characteristics to kind of help you figure out who it is that actually did it. So basically what you're using is that information to kind of narrow down which particular individual does that, but you can kind of ask other people what those are. But that's where that comes into play, because they do have different characteristics. So for example, uh, let's say at some point I give someone Brother Emmanuel. Let's say it goes to my left player. Because you do pass cards sometimes, and if I pass that card to someone, if I were to notate that I did that, perhaps I could ask this player, do you have another person with the same body type and same, uh, I guess, group type? So like, let's say another Franciscan that is also uh, large. Do you have more of those? And then at that point he can look at, you know, whether or not he has any more of those, or if he might have marked those already off, or whichever. And you do have to swear a vow of honesty, so you can't deceive, you know, you can't deceive anyone intentionally. Uh, but it is sometimes to where you have to ask information where people can actually kind of sort of remember what makes note-taking really important. Um, because, though it's really hard to note-take everything because of some of the stuff that'll occur in the game. So, but that's just the basic gist of it. Now we're going to go into how the game itself plays uh, past that. You're going to have one of these uh, three, you know, there'll be different colors because you have black, red, green. There's, you can take a pawn of whatever color you want, and then you're going to put it into the main uh, chapel area here. And from there, you can do two move every round. So let's say if blue wanted to move, he can move to this room as one move, and then he can move here as a second one. or you can move over to one of the confessionals. Now, to get to this confessional, you do have to go out here first and into here. So you can do that in one turn. And we'll go over what each of these do. And I said, uh, this is really good for that because it'll actually help remind you of some of the things that uh, may come up. Uh, the first one are the cellulas, which are basically the monk's specific cells. You draw a sus uh, suspect card from the cell's owner. So let's say if blue were to go into yellow, blue can take one card from the yellow player's hand, which will then give them a little more information because at this point I now know one more card. Uh, alternatively, if yellow was like say here and they were to move here when I'm still in that room, they are going to actually uh, take that card back and then make me do penance. Penance basically you lose your next turn and then you basically have to sit there and pray and you cannot talk to anyone as well. So it does hurt a little bit but you do get your card back if you go to that same room that they're currently in. Um, but let's say if they made it back out you know you can't take your card back at all unless you catch them within the cellula or the monk cell. Uh, then you have the main chapel uh, which is this area here, which is the start location. Uh, whenever mass is called, which is every fourth turn, everybody's going to be pulled back to the location here. And basically you get like this little bell thing, and then you also get these here, and it kind of helps you mark when the mass will uh, trigger again. But this is the mass hall. Uh, the next location is the chapter hall. The chapter hall will be, as uh, this one is actually the Capitulum. Uh, these are where revelations and accusations are made. So if you believe that, say, the uh, the suspect is a bearded individual, you can make that accu you know you can make that revelation. That way, if the card that's face down is actually a bearded person, you're going to get two victory points at the end of the game. Uh, however, if you're wrong about your accusation, you know your revelation on that you're going to lose a point at the end of the game. So it is something that could hurt you, but you kind of have a 50-50 shot with most of them anyway. So now, so that's how that goes, but then you can also make an accusation there. If you feel that you know who the individual is, 
you can then make an accusation. If you make an accusation and it is right, you'll get four victory points. If you are wrong, you'll get minus two victory points. Now, you cannot make any accusations until this pile here is gone. So you don't actually get to look at this card because what's going to happen is, let's say if I were to say, I believe it is Brother Emmanuel. Now one of the players will have to reveal that card. If no player reveals that card, then it's probably that one. But you have to wait for this stack to go away before you can actually do that. And we'll explain what that stack is also. But you'll never look at this card unless... Um, You'll never look at that card unless you've completed this pile first. Uh, the next thing is you can go to the confessional, which will be these ones here. Now what happens to the confessional, let's say if yellow were to go one, two to this confession here. You are going to take one card uh, from this particular color. So right now it's set up as white. So if I go to this, this confessional, I will take one white card from the white player here. If I do that, it will now turn me at this uh, confessional to that dice one. So the next time someone comes to this location, they are going to end up uh, taking a card from me. So it kind of distributes it a little bit more evenly. But those are the confessionals. There's one here and there's one here. This one has access just by going straight over. This one you have to go to uh, out that way first. The Crip. Um, you can draw a Crip card. And the Crip cards themselves are actually all the same. Uh, basically, you can use this whenever you want, but you use this card uh, later in the game to immediately play an, an extra turn after finishing your normal turn. And these are all going to be the same exact card. But what you can do is you can go to the, the Crip here, and it basically lets you store one turn, more or less. I mean, you'll spend a turn getting there, you'll grab a Crip card. And then you can use this crypt card to take an extra turn later. Uh, next one is the library, which is the Biblioteca. Now this one is a very powerful card. However, it does have some limitations on it. You, If you go here, you can draw a, a Biblioteca card, which is out of this pile here. Uh, you can only visit once per game and you have to have the fewest cards in your hand in order to go there. So there are some restrictions on it. As I said, you can only go there once, and you have to have pretty much be doing the worst as far as cards in hand go. If you meet both of those conditions, then you can draw one card from this, but you can only do it that one time the entire game. But they are much more powerful than any of the other cards you're gonna encounter, so sometimes that can be really beneficial if you get the right cards for that. The Parlor which is this one. At the parlor you can draw a card from the suspect pile, which is this one. Uh, if it's empty, you can ask a player of your choice to reveal a card specified only one or two specified only by one or two trades. So you can ask someone that I would like to get a hooded beard person. Like let's say the stack is already gone. You can ask a particular person, can I see a person that is both hooded and bearded? And they would have to reveal this card to you. Or they could reveal another one if they have another card. Which, this one is also hooded and bearded. So, you know, then that's where you're going to see that some of these are going to, you know, I may drop a Father William because maybe I got this card from them before, so. Or I could do Emmanuel if they've already seen it. But basically, when they ask that question, you get to show them one of those cards. Uh, the Scriptorium. You draw a Scriptorium card, what's on these ones. And then if it, And they're going to have different abilities on it. Pretty much you're just going to have to read through uh, which card you draw it and when uh, it'll be useful. Because they're going to have different effects, and with those different effects, they can benefit you differently. So that's just something, usually you just kind of read over it and see what it does. It's kind of like the Bibliotech ones. And so the Bibliotech ones were going to be a little bit more powerful. However, 
you cannot get more than one biblioteca, whereas you can get more than one scriptorium. So, so that's what each of the different rooms do. Uh, and this basically here is a courtyard, uh, even though there's a name on it. Yeah, it's basically just a courtyard section here. Uh, it doesn't actually serve any purpose but to kind of put some spaces in between things. It makes it a little bit harder to, you know, catch people going into your cells or, you know, different things of that sort. But, um, yep, yeah, so that is the different rooms. Now, as I mentioned, each of these can be played over four rounds. So whenever the round is up, you'll put the bell to the next place. Round is up, put it to the next place, and last round. Once it's on the four and that turn ends, you're going to ring the bell, and then you're going to do what it specifies on here. So all pawns would go back to the chapel, which is here. Uh, each player gives one suspect card from his or her hand to their neighbor on their left. So what these mask cards do is they actually make it to where a lot of these cards in your hand are going to start flowing to your left. And then these are going to keep continuing on, which it comes out to eight different rounds, because there are eight of these cards. So you can play up to 32 actions, like if no one has guessed it prior to that. Usually it's a little bit, quite a bit quicker than that. But uh, after each mass, you will draw an event card, uh, which is off of this one here, which is going to have some sort of effect on the game as, as well. So let's say if we drew one of these. On this particular one, all the brothers were called to meet with the abbot in private. Brothers are suspect. Each player must reveal if he has any one brother card. Uh, so at that point, you would have to reveal any cards that are brothers. Actually, you only have to reveal one brother card, but uh, these are the different types of cards that come up, and so each player would have to then reveal a brother card uh, just to kind of uh, deal with this particular card. And if you don't have any, then you'll just specify that you don't have any, but again, you have to be honest about which cards you mention. And these will usually change things up a little bit. Sometimes they're not as drastic, but some of them are a little bit more drastic, so... Yep, so as I mentioned, once this pile's gone, which mostly happens out of the parlor here. Uh, once these are all in different players' hands, at that point you can make accusations. Once someone has succeeded in a correct accusation, at that point the game will end. Then you get victory points based on you know, different conditions. As I mentioned, any correct revelation you made earlier will give you two victory points. Any wrong revelation will be minus one victory point. Uh, if you discover who the culprit was, um, you'll get four victory points. And then any false accusation, so let's say you accuse a, a particular brother or a particular monk, and that was not the correct monk because one of the players showed you that particular card that you guessed, then at that point you'll also take a minus two victory points. So pretty much that is the goal of the game, is just, as I mentioned, is to deduct who that one card is, once you've achieved that, you win the game. Or, well, it's based on the points, but whoever has the most points after the accusation occurs, they will then win. Because you could end up guessing like six times, you finally get it right, but then you get minus 12 points and only get four points back, so you could still lose, I mean, um, even if you get it right. But that sums up the game itself. Uh, so if you, I hope you do enjoy this video uh, for Mystery of the Abbey. If you've enjoyed this uh, video, uh, like if you've not already subscribed to my channel, uh, definitely subscribe to it. We will have another video next week, uh, so definitely watch for that. Uh, thank you for watching Run Light Gaming, and you have a good day.